Whoopi Goldberg and Janine Pirro got into a scream fest on The View. This clip blew up in the aftermath. Check it out. We are back with Judge Janine Pirro. I wanted to get into the book a little. You tackle the anti-Trump conspiracy in your new book called Liars, Leakers, and Liberals. Now, that title could be offensive to some. Um, <laughs> in no, today's I, age, I, you think? I, well, she was, I thought she was describing the Trump White House. Liars, leakers, and liberals. <laughs> And why you wrote the book? Well, I wrote the book because uh, I have, I'm not an ideologue. I mean, I have been in the crime business for over three decades, and I think I said that before. And I know a con when I see it. And I think that what has happened in the last, I think that what has happened truly in the last campaign, and everybody needs to be concerned about that. Lady Justice is supposed to be blind. And when you start creating fake uh, investigations, fake counterintelligence, you saw it yourself with Peter Strzok, who comes out and basically says he hates the president and he's going to take care of everything. They then go to a judge and get a warrant. That's a problem for me, the and it should be a problem. Can I ask you, you just have your warrant? Look, You're... I've been a judge. I've signed those things. The warrant was based on a fake document by an opposing candidate in a national presidential race. This is what happens it was in not third only world based on that, countries. And you know that. I do know. So I, it is Jenny, you just said that. you're not an ideologue. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not. And I am in law let enforcement. Me, let me ask you the question. It's right and do you think um, Do you think Donald Trump embraces and embodies conservative ideology? Remember, you know, he used to be uh, have a different position on pro-choice. Uh, he's imposing tariffs. He's against globalism. Do you think he is an ideologue that is faithful to conservative policies? You know, I'm not here to talk about what Donald Trump is and isn't. But you I'm not talking about, about it. it. No, you got no, to answer the question. I'm here to talk about the book. Okay. You want to talk about Donald Trump? You tell me what metric in this country is worse off. Unemployment is lower than it's been in 50 years. Minorities, Hispanics, African Americans have jobs. Hate, 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 hate crimes are worse and, off. And wait a minute, the GDP. GDP under Obama was barely one. We're going up to four. So you want to talk about no, hate yeah, crime? I'll, I'll tell you I about fought metric, for a law I, for hate crime. I also you, think it's important, as we said, 89% of the Republican Party still supports true. him. He still has huge popularity in the country. And if Democrats don't get their you-know-what together, he's certainly going well, to get reelected. Here's, here's my question you know, for you. Here's my question for you because you talk about... You, you talk about... I am not, Judge. Nobody no, is... I, no, oh, yeah. Did you just point at me? Yeah. Listen, I don't have Trump yes. derangement. Let me tell you what I have. Okay. I have a lot of, I'm tired of people starting a conversation with Mexicans or liars and rapists. I'm tired of people starting a conversation about this country. Listen. I'm 62 years old. There have been a lot of people in office that I didn't agree with, but I have never, ever seen anything like this. I've never seen anybody whip up such hate. I've never seen anybody be so dismissive. And I... And clearly, you don't watch the show, so you don't know that I don't suffer from that. What I suffer from is the inability to figure out how to fix this. That's my issue. But... One of the things that you talk about a lot, and I'm curious about it, is the deep state. How long has the deep state been there, and who's running it? Well, the, the, I want to answer your question, because you can't... I you didn't had actually to, ask oh, no, you a question. But you had I, your I, opening I, statement, which was how horrible it is, that Donald Trump no, is talking no, no, about all what you, of these no, I'm people. Sorry, you know baby, what that's I think what you said. Horrible? You said, well, but you know you what's said horrible? that it, when it was it's okay. shouldn't be here end it's, up murdering the children of American citizens. You know what's horrible? What's when, horrible when the president of the United States whips up people to beat the hell out of people. No. Say goodbye. Let me go. Damn. So what happened next is in dispute. Uh, Janine Pirro claims that she was kicked off of the show and that the, the segment was uh, concluded early because Whoopi got pissed and threw her off the show. Whoopi Goldberg says that's not true. We were, you know, planned, scheduled to go to a break there anyway. And when we came back, we weren't supposed to be with her anymore. Janine Pirro apparently also claims that Whoopi Goldberg spit on her backstage. Whoopi Goldberg vehemently denies that and says that's not true. Um, apparently they did keep going at it after when they went to the break here for a little bit and Janine Pirro started, you know, saying, 
yelling at security and yelling at the other women on The View and saying, oh, this is so unprofessional and yada yada. Um, here's my take on it. I, I, don't, I don't care who's to blame between the two of them. Frankly, at this point, I find both of them insufferable. I mean, obviously, my politics leans more towards Whoopi Goldberg than towards Janine Pirro. Um, but there's a lot to break down in that back and forth. So first, I, Pirro starts out by saying, I'm not an ideologue. I don't under, like, why are you being disingenuous? Because that is disingenuous. She is an ideologue. There's no doubt about it. She is an ideologue. Uh, in fact, it's worse than that. She's a Trump Kool-Aid drinker. It's, you know, she is on a team, that team is pro-Donald Trump, and she works backwards from her conclusion in the most insane ways imaginable. So, right off the bat, I don't know why she's being disingenuous. Just be honest. Just be like, yeah, I love Trump, I'll defend him no matter what. That's, that's my thing. You could do that, but no, it's, I'm not an ideologue, I'm about right and wrong. No, you're not about right and wrong, and stop fucking lying to everybody. And then she says, I know a con when I see it. And I don't know if you caught it there, but the audience uh, was laughing. Why? Because she's super pro-Donald Trump, and she's acting like, I know a con when I see it. So you didn't think Donald Trump was a con? You didn't think he's unfit? And this is not me saying Hillary Clinton is good, because she was not. But you didn't think Donald Trump, a guy who ran on his business record, but he went bankrupt six different times, you didn't think that was a con? I mean, come on, man. This stuff is so plain right in front of your face. Um, then she goes on to talk about, oh, fake investigations. Uh, talking about, of course, the Mueller investigation. Now, listen, I'm somebody who has mixed feelings on this. I mean, the it started out, they were like, oh, Russian interference in the election, and we're good. there's collusion, and we're going to do um, you know, an investigation to see if there's treason from Donald Trump and his campaign. And I was open and honest with everybody, and when that started, I said, mm, that sounds kind of like bullshit. But then there was an article that came, I think it was in Reuters or Bloomberg, it was a few months into the investigation, and the article said, that Robert Mueller has expanded the investigation from focusing on Russia to focusing on Trump's business empire. That day, when I read that article, I covered that story and I said, okay, now we have a real investigation, ladies and gentlemen, because focusing on uh, corruption, run-of-the-mill corruption in Trump's politics and in Trump's business empire, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of corruption there, and that's all fair game, and I would support doing that kind of investigation on any politician. If Hillary Clinton was in office, I would have said, yeah, do a, in, an official investigation into the Clinton, uh, the, um, the Clinton organization, what was it called? The Clinton Foundation? And um, you're going to find corruption, and I support that investigation. So it turns out, it, it was like a 50-50 thing with Mueller. At first, I didn't really support it. Then as time went by, and they said it's about the businesses now, I said, okay, I support that. And he's done some decent work with Flynn and Manafort, for example, and their money laundering and their crimes. I disagree with him on the weird, goofy indictment of meme makers. I think that was stupid, and those people are never going to see a day in court. It's a waste of time. I disagree with him on the, the newest round of indictments, because again, these people are never going to be in court. And it's just weird. Um, so, it's a mixed thing, but the idea that it's just a fake investigation, I don't think that's true. Now then, and this is where the they really heat up in their back and forth. Pirro says, well, what metric is worse off under Donald Trump? Now, Whoopi's response, it wasn't great. You know, because Apiro did the same old uh, song and dance that every uh, person on the right who's a defender of Trump does. <gasps> Unemployment is a historic low. <laughs> and the, the thing that frustrates me is, it, apparently, people on the left have not done their homework to adequately respond to that. Because there is a really easy way to fight back against that claim. Um, unemployment is not a good measure of how the economy's doing. Because wages are down. So you have job creation, but it's all low-wage jobs. So uh, people are supposed to be happy and think the economy's great because now people are underemployed as opposed to unemployed? No, we want higher wages along with low unemployment. But people on the left, they don't strike, they, they haven't really done their homework, so it's like when they say unemployment's at an all-time low. There's no direct refutation of that point as to why that's not really a great point. So that drives me crazy. Um, and then it's like, you know, they go back and forth on immigrants a little, and on that, Whoopi's correct, and that you fucking launched, he launched his campaign by talking about how Mexicans are, uh, criminals, they're rapists. I assume some are good people. He tried to do the Muslim ban, and then they had to 
tweak it and then it finally was approved by the court which is like wow that thing was originated with this idea that we should stop all Muslims from coming to the US that's fucking crazy so on that stuff I think Whoopi's right but I don't again I don't think she makes the strongest case and then here's where I, I fucking face palm how long has the deep state been there and who runs it oh no Whoopi listen as somebody on the left you have to you have to come correct against Trump and his cult. Like, w you can't argue the deep state isn't real. That is a ridiculous notion. You know, the CIA, I, I mean, this is, the CIA's whole point was to overthrow governments that weren't doing the bidding of us and our corporate powers. Um, you know, the idea that like, oh no, we're better now and we don't do that. We're, it's all on the up and up now. We don't violate international law anymore. They're fucking doing... You know, we still do torture. We still have CIA black sites. We still have kill lists. And by the way, Trump is actually working hand in hand with the deep state. So this idea of like, oh my goodness, there's Trump who's the noble crusader against the deep state and the deep state. No, he's done so much of what the deep state wants him to do. That's why we're bombing eight countries. That's why we pulled out of the Iran deal along with Netanyahu telling him to do that, making him do that. 432% increase in drone strikes. There's so much shit he's done that has served the establishment. And instead of saying he's an establishment puppet, he's a deep state puppet, the argument is, there is no deep state. Which is just fucking factually wrong, whoopee! So, and again, so this is what I'm concerned about in the era of Trump, is that Trump has really found a way to, like, break the brains of otherwise good people and make them make shitty arguments. And then when they make shitty arguments, that opens the door for Trump to fire back and throw fake news, fake news, and then come up with some ridiculous response in his own right. And then it's like, okay, it's a battle of bullshitters. <laughs> it's a battle of bullshitters. People on the left are bullshitting, people on the right are bullshitting. When again, this should be a Mortal combat uh, fatality, flawless victory. This should be for the left in every debate against these Trump supporters. Because it, it is not good. What's happening in this country is not good. It's really easy to rip apart his record, rip apart what he's doing. You know, whether it's all the deregulation, which is guaranteed to crash the economy, whether it's the tax cuts for corporations at a time when we have historic income inequality and corporations are already paying a historically low percentage of the tax burden. Instead of focusing on policy substance, there's this weird thing that happens where it's like people who are supposed to be on the left or... Uh, you know, deflecting to the worst possible counter-arguments like, who, what is the deep state and who runs it? That's supposed to be a gotcha. She's supposed to be doing a gotcha to Janine Pirro. Like, oh, gotcha, there's no deep state, that's just conspiracy. Oh, God. Oh, oh. So in conclusion, really they both annoy me. I don't like either one of them. Um, but, you know, what are you gonna do? This, this blew up, and Janine Pirro's running around playing the victim, and my final point will be this. Uh, stop. <laughs> you don't have to play the victim. And she even said, oh, my book sales went up as a result of this. Okay, so do your victory lap and move the fuck on. The, there's nothing more annoying than the conservative victim culture, as they always say the opposite. There's like, oh, these lefties always play the victim. Oppression Olympics. You play the victim all day. Well, there's a whole new subculture on the right, which is becoming the dominant culture, which is, where are the victims? I was wearing a MAGA hat and somebody took it off and threw it on the street. Somebody start a congressional investigation. All of you grow up. I'm done with the snowflakeism. Grow up.